जय श्री गुरुदेव डियर स्टूडेंट्स टुडे आई एल बी स्टार्टिंग विथ मॉड्यूल थ्री दिस इज द फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ मॉड्यूल थ्री टाइटल ऑफ मॉड्यूल थ्री इज टाइम रेस्पॉन्स ऑफ फीडबैक कंट्रोल सिस्टम सो इन दिस पर्टिकुलर मॉड्यूल वी आर गोइंग टू एनालाइज द फर्स्ट ऑर्डर एंड सेकेंड ऑर्डर सिस्टम यूजिंग फीडबैक एंड यू विल बी डिटर्माइनिंग द टाइम रेस्पॉन्स ऑफ फीडबैक कंट्रोल सिस्टम फॉर दीज टू ऑर्डर्स ऑफ द कंट्रोल सिस्टम coming to the outline of this particular module first we will discuss about the standard test signals which is used to determine the time response of the system and among these standard signals unit step signal is taken as the standard signal which is used to find out the step response of the first order system and second order system so we'll try to find the unit step response of the system that is first and second order system Uh, using the corresponding time response analysis then uh, you will learn about time response specifications of second order system and first order system and we will discuss about steady state errors and error constants then uh, a brief introduction about pi pd and pi d controllers is this will be discussed finally we are going to take a few important problems on all these topics so this is the outline of your module three which we will be taking one by one now in the first session we will discuss about standard test signals i'll just give you a brief introduction about important uh, test signals which is used for the analysis of the system now coming to the introduction part in time domain analysis uh, it is very important to find the response of a dynamic system uh, to any kind of input which is expressed as a function of time so we will be taking one uh, input which is defined in terms of time and using that input in the time domain we will be uh, finding the output response of the system that is what you mean by time response now it is possible to compute the time response of a system if we know the nature of the input and the uh, mathematical model of the system which we are using and these two things you must always know if you want to find out the output response for a system and generally uh, when we take up any input signals for a control system uh, first you have to decide what is the type of the input that you need to give for that system okay so you are supposed to uh, know fully ahead of a time so what is the input that you are giving for the system so generally initially we will want you knowing but for example if you want to just uh, find out something so you should know what is the type of the input that is needed for that particular system for example if i consider a radar system a tracking system the position and the speed of the target to be tracked may vary in random fashion but initially i will not be knowing it but i know there is a target which might come across in the tracking field but i will be knowing what is the type of the target it might come or what is the speed of that target that is unknown to us correct so it is therefore it's very difficult to express the actual input uh, signals mathematically for so generally i cannot judge uh, this could be the input i can just analyze the system by taking some input but definitely you cannot say this will always be the input for the system so that depends on your application of the system this is what it means now coming to standard signals that is what uh, so since we cannot judge the type of the input we might get for a system so we are taking some standard sig test signals and using those those test signals we are analyzing the given control system so if the system works for this standard signals it can work for any other type of the signal which you might come across that is why testing of any system with the standard test signal is very much important and you need to use these standard signals for analysis of the system in the time domain so the characteristic of your and uh, actual input signals are a sudden shock that is what i told you suddenly you might get so you might have a sudden change in the input so or you might get a constant velocity or a variation in the velocity also you can have or you can have a constant uh, constant acceleration or it might vary so it is very difficult to judge the actual input signals that your system will receive for that purpose the dynamic behavior of a system is therefore judged and it is compared by application of the standard test signals like 
impulse signal or step signal or a constant velocity signal or a constant acceleration signal so by taking these signals we are trying to analyze the system so we are not taking the actual input signals standard signals are taken and the system is tested for those standard signals and then it is given for the actual input so another uh, important uh, of this standard set signal is the standard signals are of great importance is sinusoidal signals so along with these four standard signals another important uh, standard signal is sinusoidal signal so let's take up these standard signals one by one so the first standard signal is impulse signal so this is the diagram of the impulse signal which is given to us so this is the signal which can take any constant value only at the time t equal to 0 and it is equal to 0 for any other instant of time t so here delta t is given by this equation this is the symbolic representation of our impulse signal which is standardly used for representation of impulse signals it is taken as delta t so delta t is taken as equal to a for t equal to 0 that is what it means this is the amplitude so it has a value only at t equal to 0 and it is considered to be 0 for t not equal to 0 and if the amplitude is taken as a then the signal is known as unit impulse signal so this is the basic signal which is used for analysis of any of the system impulse signal or unit impulse signal if the amplitude is 1 at the origin now coming to step signal a step signal is usually represented as u of t this is a standard signal which will have a constant amplitude towards your right time axis that is or the positive time axis so it uh, takes a value as equal to a for t greater than or equal to 0 that means towards the positive time axis it has a constant amplitude till it can go up to infinity also and it is considered as zero for t less than 0 that means here it is completely zero towards your negative time axis and if this amplitude a is taken as equal to 1 then it is called as unit step signal that is a signal with a magnitude as unity so this is the second standard signal which is generally used to analyze the system and the next standard signal is a ram signal a ram signal will take a shape like this it's a linear signal okay so with some particular amplitude or it is also called as constant velocity velocity signal and this ram signal is usually it is represented as r of t is equal to at for t greater than or equal to 0 and it is 0 for t less than 0 and if a is equal to 1 the ram signal is usually called as unit ram signal that means whatever is your t value that itself for example if t is equal to 0 your amplitude is also 0 you can observe here if t equal to 1 it takes the amplitude as equal to 1 and it goes like this so this is called as your unit ram signal which is another standard test signal which we have so this is the slope that is what i showed you okay a to a it goes like this if you have an amplitude as a this is an unit ram signal which is taking the that is what i told you if uh, t is 0 it will be 0 and so on now coming to the next standard signal which is called as a parabolic signal it's also called as constant acceleration characteristic signal so here this is represented as p of t okay so which is equal to a t square by 2 for t greater than or equal to 0 and it is 0 for t less than 0 and if this a is equal to 1 the parabolic signal is usually called as unit parabolic signal so it has a parabolic shape like this so this is the fourth standard signal that we are going to use for the analysis of the system so this is a parabolic signal with slope as equal to a so wherein you have a gain as equal to 0.5 a 2 a 4.5 a and so on you have your unit parabolic signal which is taking the values 0.52 and 
4.5 and so on. So coming to the relationship between the standard signals, your impulse signal is represented like this, your step signal is represented by this equation as discussed previously and your ramp is represented like this and your parabolic signal is represented by this equation. So a step signal is nothing but taken as what integral of delta t or uh, delta t is nothing but taken as derivative of your step signal and a ramp is signal is taken as t into u of t. So by using one signal you can analyze the other signal. So ramp could also be represented as t into u of t and step is taken as integral of delta t and delta is taken as derivative that is d u of t by dt and parabolic signal is taken as derivative of your ramp so there is a relationship between each of your signals the derivative of t is what it is d one minute this integral sorry integral of t and it goes like this integral integral Okay, so integral of 1 will give you the other signal and if you reverse like this derivative that is what I told you reverse is derivation forward is integration. Now coming to Laplace transform of these standard signals Laplace transform of your impulse signal delta s is taken as a which is given like this because it is just a constant a. So derivative of a, a Laplace transform of a constant is always constant. Laplace transform of your unit step signal is taken as A by S. Laplace transform of ramp signal is taken as A by S square. So derivative of your uh, sorry, Laplace transform of T is always 1 by S square. And Laplace transform of t square by 2 is nothing but equal to 2a by s cube. These are the Laplace transform of the four standard signals that we are going to use for analyzing the feedback system. Now coming to time response of control system. Time response of a dynamic system uh, it is nothing but a response to an input which is expressed as a function of time. So this is shown with the figure here. I have a system which I have taken here with some input okay so we have two types of response one is called as transient response another one is called as steady state response so we have two components in this when we take the time response for a system here as you can see I have one step signal and an impulse signal for a step signal this is the type of the response what I have got and for an impulse signal this is the type of the response which we have got now we'll see about these steady state response and transient response in the upcoming slides now coming to time response of control system when the response of the system is changed from rest or equilibrium it takes some time to settle down obviously so suddenly uh, you will not get any response so you need some time you have to give some time for your system to settle down Okay, transient response is the response of the system from rest to equilibrium to steady state. So please observe this. Transient response is the response of a system from rest or from equilibrium to steady state. And the response of the system after the transient response is called as your steady state response. This is the major difference. So from the rest or from equilibrium to steady state whatever response I am going to get that is nothing but your transient response and after the transient response whatever output response you are going to get that is taken as your steady state response that is after reaching your steady state the type of the response what I am going to get that is called as your steady state response so this is, that is what is shown here so here from here to this state 
this part is called as your transient response and after reaching this steady state whatever response i am going to get that is nothing but my steady state response so this is the difference between the two types of the response of the system now tangent response it basically depends upon the system poles only and not on the type of the input so it basically is depending on the poles of the system so it is therefore sufficient to analyze the transient response using only the step input whereas the steady state state response it depends upon the system dynamics and the input quality so therefore uh, it is therefore examined using different test signals by final value theorem so transient response it is just analyzed using the step input whereas steady state response is analyzed using the system dynamics and the input quality so for that purpose we are going to use the final value theorem to find out the steady state response now let's take an example of a first order system and we'll try to analyze the response for this system so this is the transfer function that we have for a first order system with only one pole so c of s by r of s is taken as k divided by t s plus 1 where k is the dc gain and t is the time constant of the system so here the time constant is a measure of how quickly the first order system responds to an unit step input so this is a constant here we have which is a measure of the quick response of the first and order system for the given step input and dc gain of the system is the ratio between the input signal and the steady state value of the output so let's take an example of a first order system where k is taken as equal to 10 and time constant is taken as equal to 3 seconds so here the dc gain is k equal to 10 and the const time constant is equal to 3 seconds okay for this particular system we are going to get g of s as equal to oh, for another example it is 3 divided by s plus 5 okay so for this particular example uh, you have to take 5 as common because you have to you here you don't have a coefficient for t so take 5 common because the standard form is always ts plus 1 okay k equal to ts plus 1 is the standard form of the transfer function for a first order system so but here this is not in the standard form because i have phi here so what you need to do is you have to take this phi common and then that is taken as your standard form that is why here i have got 3 by phi and 1 by phi by taking phi common from the denominator so if for this system the dc gain is 3 by phi and the time constant is 1 by so always whenever a transfer function is given for your system try to express it in the standard form by taking the corresponding value as common now we will try to find out the impulse response for a first order system now let's take the first order system and the input what i am taking here is my impulse input because it is the impulse response what i am finding it out so delta t i am taking with magnitude as 1 so unit impulse is taken as an input and this is the transfer function of the system what i have k divided by ts plus 1 now r of s is taken as delta s which is nothing but equal to 1 so c of s by r of s is nothing but equal to k divided by ts plus 1 itself same response you are going to get okay so c of s is taken as equal to what k divided by ts plus 1 so if i rearrange my term by taking t as common c of s is taken as k by t s plus 1 by t so i have a pole at s is equal to minus 1 by t so the order represent the response of a system in time domain we need to compute the inverse laplace transform of this above equation so if for this equation we are supposed to find out the inverse laplace transform to find out the type of the output that we are going to get in the time domain so when you take the impla, uh, lapla, inverse laplace transform for this the standard inverse laplace transform what i have is c divided by s plus a is nothing but equal to c into e power minus at so if i apply this i am going to get c of t as equal to k by t e power minus t by t 
because here in place of a i have 1 by t okay so here the constant value is k by t which is getting multiplied so this is nothing but my c so k by t e power minus t by t so it's an exponential response what i am going to get for my system for an unit impulse input now if you take some value for k and t if k equal to 3 and t equal to 2 seconds this is the type of the response i am going to get which is an exponentially decaying signal so it is what 3 by 2 so 1.5 we will be starting from 1.5 and it goes like this when you replace the value for t as equal to 2 4 6 and 8 so it's an exponentially decaying signal response what i've got for the impulse input that is given for the first order system so you can take a few values and you can analyze the type of the response what you are going to get for this particular system so in today's session we have discussed about standard test signals so the four st important standard signals which is used for that time domain analysis of the system is impulse signal step signal velocity signal acceleration signal which is also called as ramp signal and parabolic signal and we have learned how to find the laplace transform for all these standard test signals and here we have taken an example of a first order system with the transfer function as k divided by ts plus 1 and then we have uh, we have tried to find out the impulse response for a first order system in today's session so i hope today's uh, concepts you have followed and these are your references for the topic so you can refer any one of the book which is listed here for the concepts what is taught in today's session thank you all have a nice day jai shri gurudev